Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're taking a short trip from the Newport Ritchie, Florida, just over to Lakeland, Florida, where we're going to be visiting with race face driver Gavin Graham. Gavin, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on the show today. All right. So, man, what an exciting year that you've had in, in 2020. But before we get into the racing side of things, can you tell some of the fans that may not be familiar with Gavin Graham a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, everybody, I'm uh, 12 years old. I'm a seventh, seventh grader at Lake Alfred Polytech Academy. I'm My favorite subjects are math and robotics. Uh, I really love robotics. I love uh, my hobbies of uh, driving jet skis, uh, eye racing with Anthony Alfredo, and um, spending time with my family. And I just uh, love everybody so much in my family. All right. So tell me a little bit about the robotics side of things. What's What's going on there? Uh, robotics, you basically build these Lego robots that, uh, that help you train around little courses and, uh, you do these little tiny missions that, um, that, uh, that help you navigate through, like, cups, lines. It's, uh, really fun. I really enjoy it. Are you good at it? Uh, yes, sir. I've always was born with an after talent of robotics. I, this was a gift born with me. All right. That's cool. So tell everybody about how long you've been racing. Uh, I've been racing for five years full time. Uh, I've been racing a few races prior. I, uh, but once I started getting into racing, I just turned eight and I was racing asphalt the first year. And then the rest of the time in go kart I was racing dirt. Then when I hopped into the truck, I was still racing go karts, but I was racing the truck off and on. And then uh, we started racing trucks full time last year in 2019 and legend cars last year. All right, so let's talk a little bit about school because school is being treated differently all across the country. Um, are you going to virtual school? Or are you actually going to the physical school this year? Uh, I'm going to physical school this year because I feel like I'm better hands-on with everybody. Uh, I like interacting with all my uh, students and uh, classmates and my, uh, my, uh, my teachers because they really help me and tell me what to do if I don't know something. They really, it's really helpful for me in all these subjects. Yeah, that's pretty cool because a lot of the kids around the country don't have that option. A lot of them have to take virtual school. Now, did you do some virtual classes last year though? Uh, I did virtual when I was in sixth grade, uh, once we went on quarantine. And that's, uh, that's the only time I did virtual school. It was not fun. It was not fun, okay. What didn't you like about it? Just not just, being around people or? Yes, I just, I'm not good with not being around people because I usually when I'm at school, my friends help me if I don't know something. My friends are usually pretty smart where they can help me with everything. <laughs> All right, that's cool. So let me ask, speaking of your friends, what do they think about you being a race car driver? Um, a lot of them always say that it's really cool that they know somebody that races. They always say that they want to come out to the track, but like sometimes their parents won't let them because of the, uh, the pandemic that's happening. All right. Do they realize how good you are, though? Uh, they, ha they haven't seen a race or a video of me yet, so I don't think they know yet. All right. Well, really that would be like a best-kept secret. So let's talk a little bit about your 2020 season. Uh, you, did talk, you did say that you were racing legend cars and you were racing pro trucks. I know you did a lot of racing over in Auburndale in your, in your own truck, but you got to venture off a little bit and the legend car, too, as well. But you did get to venture off a little bit and run some pro trucks with Kurt Brett Motorsports. So give me just a Gavin Graham 30 or 60 second version of your 2020 year. Uh, well, in 2020, we, uh, we were racing legend cars. We didn't get to run Winter Nationals because my birthday was just a little late, but uh, we managed it and we, uh, we raced a, lo a lot of races in Florida and uh, we won seven races in Florida, two of them in Atlanta and came fourth in the, uh, the Thursday Thunder uh, Legend Series. Then in the truck, we uh, we had a big win at Auburndale. We uh, we won at Chris Motorsports Park, finished P3 at uh, Five Flags during the Snowball Derby. And uh, it was just an amazing year with everybody on my team. All right, so let's talk a little bit. I was lucky enough to be over to Auburndale for your win. That was, that was kind of an exciting thing because I will tell you, as I've told a lot of people about you, I said, that race right there, I mean, he raced his way up to the front and then 
I mean, everybody was trying to wear you out. I mean, they were on your bumper. They were slamming your doors. I mean, you're racing against people that are three and four times your age. Uh, so I was really impressed when I left there for that race. I know it was an exciting time for you, but let's talk about the Snowball Derby. You know, I mean, this is probably, I think a lot of people would argue, one of the biggest pro truck races of the year. And you go down there. First of all, we can admit it now, you were kind of sliding under the radar a little bit because of your age, which was really cool. And you go out and put your truck on the pole. What was that like? It was so much fun racing there. I just, uh, I was only eight one thousandths of a second off of that track record. And I was just so happy that I got the pole and I was glad that I was starting P1 so then I didn't have to maneuver my way so much through traffic so then I could pull away. It was just an amazing experience there, ready for 2021 at that track. I'm just really glad that Kurt put such a great truck together there. And, and think about it. You were down there racing in front of people like Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott and Noah Gregson and Chandler Smith and, you know, the best late model drivers in the country. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, I, I don't even think it's even up for an argument. That was probably the most stacked field of racers that was ever assembled in one weekend that I've ever seen as far as when you're talking about late model racing. And you got to go out there and, and at, you know, at 12 years old, you got to set on the pole, right? You know, yes, barely missed the track record. And then you brought home a third place finish. And I think at the end of it, uh, your teammate, you know, Grant Thompson actually won the race. But at the end of the day, everybody was talking about your truck. They were like, who's in that 19 truck? And I kept saying, that's Gavin Graham. And if you haven't heard about him, you're going to. And I personally think you put yourself on the map during that weekend. Yes, sir. So has it kind of sunk in? What did you, it, let me just ask you to ask you this question. What did you learn there? I learned how that you got to be really consistent with your starts, how you can't lack on the starts. And uh, you, I learned how to like really respect all my other competitors uh, and understood the speed there and with everybody else around you, how you have to pace yourself and how you have to pace yourself the whole race with everybody around to manage tires. It was just a really fun experience. And you brought up restarts. So let's talk a little bit about that because I'm going to tell you right now that there's not a driver on this planet anywhere that through their career has not been, you know, the two things that everybody struggles with is, is qualifying. You didn't have an issue there, but restarts. Restarts are one of the things that it's not something that you just pick up overnight. I mean, uh, because every track you go to is different. Everybody has a different starting point. Um, you got to rely on your spotter. There's so many different things that go into that. So if you had to, to walk away and say, next time I go back to the Snowball Derby in a pro truck or even to Five Flags, this isn't going to happen to me because this is what I learned over that weekend. What would that be? That would be just... Just go. Just once you see that green flag, just go. Don't just lay go. back or anything. Hammer down, yeah. right? Yes, sir. So you fell back, I think, at one time because I was there. You fell back to, I want to say, about six or seven. But, dude, I mean, I even said that to you after the race. You were talking about hanging a truck out. And I'm setting up in the stands, and everybody's talking about that. Watch that 19 truck, man, because you were, you were storming, storming through the field. And, and I want to tell you, it was an impressive run. I thought you did an amazing job. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of people talking about who's that 12-year-old in that truck. And they wanted to know that. So a very, very successful weekend. Um, let me ask you another question, Gavin. How difficult is it going from a legend car to a truck and then back to a truck, back to a legend car? Or do you have any issues with that? Or is it kind of seamless for you it's actually not very difficult like once you get used to it uh like when I raced at Auburndale 
when I won that pro truck race when you were there, when I hopped in the legend car, I started in the back and I made my way all the way back up to the front. But unfortunately, brake failure caused me to not finish. But I was definitely one of the fastest cars out there. And I was making a pass on the lead. I was just, didn't feel like nothing even changed. Yeah, I was like, who needs brakes? <laughs> that, that is one thing. If you're racing legend cars, you, you, definitely, you definitely need brakes. But I, I think, you know, 2021 season, um, you're kind of already starting because you live in the Sunshine State. Don't look outside today because I don't know what it's like over in Lakeland, but over here on the right on the coast, it's kind of rainy and it's kind of cold. And, you know, it's like 54 degrees, 52 degrees. And, and of course, there'd be a lot of people watching going, that's not cold. You know, all these guys up in Minnesota and stuff like that, they're going, it's like 19 degrees here. But it, it's not a sunshiny day like we're like we're. Uh, accustomed to here in Florida, but you get to race all winter. So you've got a couple of races coming up. I think you've got a race coming up on the 23rd um, and that's back in Auburndale. What else do you got going on for the, for the rest of the early part of 2021? Um, after that Auburndale race, I will be racing the winter nationals for the legend cars the whole week from the, uh, from the 6th of February all the way to the 12th during the whole week. That's because that, that big race is right there at your home track, right? Yes, sir. Are you looking forward to that? Yes, sir. I think I have a really good chance there because of how many laps I got put down. I uh, definitely am going to have one of the best teams there, and I think I have the capability and the skill to win that championship. Okay, so let me ask you, uh, what else do you have scheduled for the pro truck for the rest of uh, the early part of 2021? Um, we do plan to race the pro truck at a uh, five flags when they f start their first race up at the beginning of March and, uh, plan to race, uh, five flags, Chris in Montgomery and Auburndale for the rest of the year too. And you're going to be running again, some races in your truck and you're going to also be racing for Kurt Brett Motorsports. Is that right? Yes, sir. What, what have you learned racing with Kurt so far? Uh, Kurt, he's definitely a really experienced uh, truck driver and uh, truck crew chief. He's uh, always put up a fast truck anywhere we go. And uh, he's always just real fast every, everywhere we go. He's uh, he's also crew chief in my double zero truck down in Florida also. And um, ever since we went to Auburndale, we've always been fast. And on the second time, we already beat the track record there. So he's really, really good with trucks. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. If you if you see a Kurt Brett Motorsports truck or even one that he's kind of laid his hands on um, at the racetrack, you know that that truck's going to be fast. And you have somebody else, you know, that is helping you with your with your driving. And I think it, it'd be cool to kind of give him a shout out because he's kind of like a legend around here in the NASCAR in the NASCAR world and a lot of experience. So talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, Anthony, really fun guy. He's always really good on any track we go to, even if he hasn't been there. Like when we were racing at Nashville uh, yesterday in the pro in the NASCAR truck and uh, setting down a real fast lap and taught me the line around there. It was really fun, really nice dude. He's a, I think he has a really bright future up in the Cup Series with Front Row. And uh, I just can't believe that a Cup Series driver is helping me on iRacing. So for those of you that didn't catch that, He's actually doing some simulator training with um, NASCAR rookie Cup Series driver Anthony Alfredo, who has also been, you know, kind of involved with our race face program for, you know, for several years. And 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 you are right, Gavin. I mean, gosh, what a great guy that he is. You know, I I tell everybody all the time. I think he's probably the most marketable guy in all of motorsports. And it has to be. You know, I mean, it has to be pretty cool that when you when you log off with him, you're thinking about, wow, I'm getting trained by a cup driver. And uh, so I, I'm just saying, man, did you run to school and tell all of your friends that? Uh, actually, fortunately, I did not. I mean, because I uh, didn't tell everybody because they wouldn't really know what iRacing is yet. So. Yeah. Well, and it's best that when you get an advantage like that, of course, we just kind of let it out of the bag here. But, but uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a great learning cycle with you working with, with Anthony. He's not only a great race car driver, but 
you know, Anthony, he, he actually has his own iRacing League, the ERL League, and uh, he's pretty deckum good when it comes to, uh, comes to iRacing and simulators, very well versed. He's had iRacing on his car for a couple of races and sim seats. So um, I'm just really happy that the two of you got to join together. And um, that, that's, just, that's just pretty cool. There's not a lot of kids around the country that can say they're, you know, number one, that they even know, you know, personally know a cup driver, but to get trained by one at the same time is, is awesome. Yes, sir. All right, so let's talk about the rest of your 2021 plans. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, just share with us a little bit about, you know, once you get through these first kind of pro truck races um, and get out of the winter into the summer, what else do you have planned? Uh, I do plan to race the whole Five Flag Series throughout the whole year. Uh, I plan to race a few Montgomery races, uh, race uh, a lot, of, quite a few um, Chris races in the pro truck and um, at Arbondale we'll be racing as many as much as we can there. We, uh, we will be racing the winter nationals as I said earlier and uh, we'll, we'll be running uh, the road course races up in Charlotte too. Okay and and I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see maybe some late model testing in your future over the summertime maybe. That'd yes, be pretty sir. cool. So um, we're just about out of time so are there any uh, sponsors that you'd like to give a shout out to before we end up? Uh, I'd like to thank LNR Structural Corporation, Bright Trailers, FOJ Foundation, Race Race Advancement, Matthew John Soldavini, and uh, my spotter, my Kurt, uh, Dennis Lambert, and uh, everybody that helps me in my future and uh, right now and uh, planning for me to uh, support me for the rest of my career. Yeah, well, you, everybody, again, if you haven't heard of him, Gavin Graham, you're going to be hearing a lot from him. Extremely talented young race car driver. If you've not connected with him, I want you to visit GavinGrahamRacing.com. GavinGrahamRacing.com. We're showing it right here on the screen. And I want you to go into the fan zone. In the fan zone, you can request hero cards. You can also sign up for Gavin's digital newsletter. Make sure to follow him on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And like I said, 2021, a big season for this young man. So, Gavin, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'm looking forward to following you all year and seeing you real soon. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name is Rod Wortham, and we'll see you back here in two weeks for the next Race Day Spotlight. Done. Hey, good deal, man. Hey, I think you're good.